I guess the key question, what people are going to be asking if they haven't already been to your channel and found out, what? what what's wrong with a 750 quid C6? Not a lot now, but when it was, well, when I got it, it was just the way it rode over bumps, the way it stopped, mm -hmm. um, the way it changed gear, and the way it held itself when parked. Oh, not much then? No. No. The, no. the stereo was fine. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they're quite a lot. They're quite complicated cars, but mm. my logic was at that kind of money that is not. I wasn't really putting much on the line to discover. You know, I thought. Oh I yeah. Can... Plus, you've got the skills as your video well, show to actually deal with the issues. Yeah, there is that. It's been quite involved. Some of the stuff. Yeah, it done. has. You, you don't have to... want to give too much away, but you have to think. It's the one front of the... end's been in bits. Yes. Well, yeah. Some of it. Yeah. You have to. You have to think about it. Um, you have to learn how they work. Mm. This is one of the cars where owners forums are just crucial because it, back in the day when these came out no one would well dealers didn't always know what they were doing with them well no as a point of perspective they sold 23,000 worldwide worldwide of these in the uk it was just over a thousand gosh so, so it's a pretty rare car yeah already. it's even rarer now yeah but um yeah it's citroen yeah i don't the dealers didn't want them. I mean, my missus used to work at a Citroen dealer, and she said that the this era car, the GJ fifty nine car, they were forcing these on dealers to get rid of them because mm. this was thirty eight thousand pound. Gosh. Well, that's the list price. Yeah. I don't imagine anyone paid anything like no. that for it because um, although it says it's a fifty nine plate, it's actually two thousand seven. It would have just, just sat in a field for two years, unsold, yeah. as any GJ fifty nine C six has. Um, but um, yeah, the dealers didn't know about them. And over the years, you just, you read all the things that people have done, the mistakes they've made, the things they've found. And as I say, forums are just an absolute treasure trove. Mm -hmm. Well, immobilizers. Well, yes. That's where I found that. So, Take, takes us back to yeah. the uh, Ford forums. Yeah. yeah, so they are, they're gold. They're absolute mm -hmm. gold dust. And um, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't have found the suspension problem, which mm. I ended up solving for 10 quid. Brilliant. So um, when, you know, if you took it to a garage, even with someone who had a £5,000 snap-on diagnostic machine, they'd look at it and they'd go, I don't know, it says something about values. Yeah. You know? So you've that you, you got to in, interpret it. The, the last video you put out on this was the one where you're talking about the suspension and how yeah. it has to corner weight itself. Yeah. Because it's all, each corner is independently controlled. Yeah. Not just front and rear. No, it's um, it's got a central hydraulic pump, um, which is the same fluid as the steering. Okay. It's not the same pump, but it's mm. the same fluid, so that makes it feel a little bit more like a Citroen. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it has a central hydraulic pump and a high pressure circuit like other Citroens, but it's got an electronic sensor on each wheel, a bit like modern cars that have got Xenon headlights have uh, one on an axle to do the headlamp leveling. Mm -hmm. Well, this has got one on each corner and basically, yeah, the computer monitors what's going on however many thousands of times a second or something like that. And it profiles the road. So if, the, if this wheel goes over a pothole, the computer can kind of profile that pothole. And when the back end approaches it, it knows it's coming. So at the right minute, based, based on speed, steering angle, everything mm -hmm. like that, it will make the back suspension go soft. So it just hits it. That's the theory. Doesn't quite work like that, mm. um, but it, it's. I look forward to testing it. The roads of Wales should be ideal. I think you'll be. I mean, you've you 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 know Citroens. You've driven loads. I think you'll be. My feeling is you'll be a little underwhelmed. That was certainly true of the four-cylinder one. Yeah. Well, they don't have Amvar because this has got active springing and active damping. Um, so yeah, it can basically it it can. You know, in the top of a suspension, you're going geeky now. You know, in the top of the suspension sphere, you've got a little tiny hole mm -hmm. and the size of the hole makes a difference to the damping. This has got a slide valve, just like a triangle. Good grief. So it moves like so fast, you can't see it moving and it adjusts. So you can have no damping or all damping in, you know, like that. Mm. And, uh, and are you confident that the gearbox issues have been overcome? No. Excellent. This should be ideal for a 500 mile There's no drive hills in Wales, Wales are there? A couple. Here and there. Yeah, but they're only small. Yeah, tiny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, you're around in, like, this is Hampshire, mate. This is, this is proper hilly. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, you, you'd be fine. Um, I think it'd be a good car mm. around Wales. I'm, I'm actually quite jealous because I'd quite like to drive it around Wales. 
Um, the thing oh, well, I, when it breaks down, you can come and collect it. Yeah, I don't think it'll fit on my trailer. Uh. Um, yeah, you break it, you buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, it's only 750 quid. Surely. Yeah, yeah. Well, it owes me now. I mean, I'm, on my videos, I'm totting it up, and I can't tell you what it fully owes me because I haven't done the final video at this point. But yeah, it probably owes me as much as you would buy because people would say, what's the point? You could have just bought a better one. But there's no guarantee that that wouldn't have needed some of these no. bits anyway. The gearbox no. problem is common, mm. really common. Um, it's the same gearbox as a Volvo. It's a Toyota gearbox. Well, oh, Asian, 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 Asian Warner. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's sealed for life, apparently. And of course, nothing is. Yeah. So is this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah apart, apart from when it pees it all over the yeah. floor. It's sealed for it's life. It's just self-changing, isn't it? Yeah. Just keep pouring it in the top and it yep. slowly comes out the bottom. But um, yeah, so... Yeah, the, the gearbox um, is a common problem on these. Um, they snap crankshafts as well, these engines. Okay, that's good to they know. They snap in half. Yeah, because this is the same um, 2.7 V6, also used in Land Rovers, yeah. Peugeots, uh, some Fords? Um, well, I think in- Ford uh, Territory in, Ford in, in Australia. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah Australia, yeah. Um, Jaguars. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember when the Top Gear years and years ago we did a lap time around the Nurburgring in an S type? Mm. That had that one ah. of those. But those are all in line configurations. The only ones that use them transversely are the C6, the C5, not Cecily C5. Yeah, the, the X7. Yeah, the X7. Mark III. And the 40, Peugeot 407 and 607. 607? Yeah. I think I mean, the 607, 607 does. Um, so yeah, they're the only ones that use it in, in, in transverse configuration. Um, but it was mostly developed by Ford. It's not mm. really a... Well, What's wrong with that? It's Nothing basically the same car. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, they're, the engine's made in Dagenham. Mm. So <laughs> yes, take it home, go to Essex. But yeah, it's, uh, no, it's, I think it's a good engine. I just, the, the, the economy is not great around town, but I think they're strangely close on power, these two, considering they're completely different cars. What's, mm. what's, this is 211. Oh, it's 201. Oh, there you go. Well, once that was 201. Yeah. When it had two brand new turbos and everything like that. But what's the torque? We didn't talk I, I can't actually remember the torque oh, figure. Oh, come on. Definitely without looking it up, I know this is uh, <laughs> 263 pound foot of torque. Uh, what was it? 4,000 RPM? 3,000. 3,000. Yeah, this yeah. is 325 Ooh. at 1,900. Wow. And I think this is lazy. So that's going to be. Oh, uh, no, this is it, ridiculously lazy. Excellent. To the point that it, you quite when you want to pull away at a junction, um, it doesn't want to wake up. Yeah, it, no, it, it, it's it's like French. It's just yeah. Yeah, but I'd like to go now, please. And mm. it's, so yeah, it's not a sprinter. Apparently, the naught sixty is something in the eights. Oh, I don't know how they've done that. They must have fired it out of a cannon first. Mm. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing how it drives. It's going to be a very interesting drive, and I will be taking you along with me we'll, we'll do some walk around a bit later on but i think we need to jump into the journey home well it's the day after and we're going to start our journey home um sadly the air conditioning isn't working so i'm having to leave the windows open which is um not ideal but uh, the engine very peaceful 2.7 liter v6 twin turbo diesel uh the ge gear box is not ideal remember this was a 750 pound car oh that's quiet that's classic fm uh, which somehow seems appropriate rather than the um very early nirvana that mr kitch appeared to have left playing in here uh so we'll uh, crawl our way across the petrol station forker i've just paid over 100 pounds to refuel this car uh, which will hopefully get me all the way back to wales and back here again and leave a bit in the tank for mr kitch who was kind enough to lend me his car Off the line, it's horrendously laggy. It seems to be laggy in every way possible. But I, I quite like the noise, although it does remind me of um, a Volkswagen LT van with a six-cylinder diesel. It's got a bit more shove than one of those, um, thankfully. I do find around town, it's a bit rocky back and forth, this ever so clever suspension. Uh, electrically controlled, always trying to work stuff out. Um, it does get a bit rocky, but if you put the suspension in sport mode, it tends to cut that out and it behaves much better. Let's do the window up just for a bit at least. And it is marvellously serene. You can only imagine 
how wonderful it would be if it actually had air conditioning. Uh, Gearbox doesn't like um, coming to a stop, so I'm just going to pop her into neutral. It's a six-speed ZF unit, and uh, it's one where it's meant to go into a sort of neutral state when you come to a stop. It isn't very good at doing that, so uh, a little help goes a long way. But yeah, I mean, it feels pretty darn special, really. If perhaps not as special as you might expect from an evolution of Citroen such as this. But I've got a head-up display, so I can see the speedometer kind of in the middle of the road ahead of me and that is a really nice feature it's not um, overly obtrusive but it allows me to keep my eye on my speed without having to drop my eye line at all i think that's something that's become more common in recent years but it works so well so it's the first time I'm actually taking it onto a motorway oh yeah she does gather pace quite nicely it's just that initial lag when you first put your foot down and you commit to pulling out in a junction there is not really much go at all which is quite irritating and i'm going to drop the suspension back into normal mode now oh yeah you actually feel the difference immediately kitch did say uh, he um, thinks the spheres may need regassing on this example so it is a further reminder that this is not the best example but i drove a 2.2 four cylinder diesel some years ago and i remember being entirely underwhelmed by that this seems to have much more float about it we'll see if we can um, feel the improvements kitch has been making to this car he's uh, rebushed the front end replaced ball joints fitted the correct no he spaced the wishbones because they were actually from a peugeot 407 and didn't actually have the, quite the right geometry but yeah, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to have to put this in sport mode. It's actually making me feel queasy. It's too bouncy. And uh, it, it's not like a DS sort of a float. It's, um, it just never seems to settle. And it's unsettling is the phrase I'd use. A m magnificent white elephant for Citroen, the C6. Yeah, it's a really nice driving position. I'm not a fan of leather seats. Uh, I, I don't see why that's a luxury thing. I much prefer plush velour. But uh, yeah, it's certainly very quiet and peaceful. We are limited to 60 miles an hour on this stretch of motorway today, it seems. But uh, yeah, it just feels lovely. I think when the C6 first came out, I was really underwhelmed. Um, but uh, I, the styling has really grown on me. I think it's very neat around the front end. The rear styling is just delicious. And... Uh, we shall show you more of that as we conduct a proper walk around test on this car, which we haven't done yet. Well, I have the good fortune to be at Cheveley Services near Newbury. Uh, glamorous as ever, but glamour is definitely the word here, I think, with the um, Citroen C6. I've got these uh, apparently astonishingly powerful xenon headlamps, which turn with the steering, apparently. Uh, the indicators are down here with the um, fog lamps. Uh, we'll go the other way around. Uh, because a bird uh, the size of a pterodactyl made a mess of this car earlier but if the front's a little ordinary and i think it is it all starts coming together at the back end where you've got the swooping fast back look and this strange little notch back these intricate rear lights and the curved rear window to echo the citroen cx there's a fair size boot under this flap there we go and uh, I've got some oil because I, I need to check the level apparently it's just out of service but it's a decent sized boot it's not actually all that deep but uh, nonetheless the access is pretty good by the way you do not want to replace the rear bumper on one of these because it starts here is all this wraps all the way around and uh, yeah there's an awful lot to it I think on some models this is an active spoiler I don't know if this one has that I'll have to keep an eye out but uh I quite like the fact the fog lights and reverse lights are in the middle there uh, surrounding the number plate. I think that's actually quite a nice feature. But yeah, this, this little design feature is echoed all around the car, uh, even in the um, headlamps here. So really rather nice. Uh, we'll turn our attention under the bonnet to start with, I think. But I must point out, we've got frameless doors. It's beeping because I've left the key in. My Bilingo does that as well. It's just as irritating in that. Um, in fact, let's look at the interior because we're here now. We've got these lovely little um, door pockets. Look at that. 
Nice to see those still working, electric seats, because this is an exclusive. All very grubby in here. I don't think that's because Kitsch is a grubby person. I think it's just because uh, this example has 156,000 miles on it and a cream interior is an absolute nightmare to keep clean. This is quite funky. Uh, you can adjust the center armrest so you get a different position. Uh, there are also different ways of opening it. I've got a little shelf in there, but there's also a bigger one. Look, look he's got pretty decent taste in music, has our Mr. Kitch. It's actually Nirvana's Nevermind he's got in the stereo at the moment. Uh, there is an electronic handbrake. Oh, we've got some money down here. Ooh. Uh, but uh, it, it isn't an automatic one, so you have to manually select it, which means you can safely ignore it and not worry about things breaking. Uh, here we go, the six-speed transmission. You've got a Tiptronic feature as well. I don't honestly know why you'd use that. Uh, a stereo, lots of buttons, buttons everywhere. And uh, if I turn it on, you may be able to see the head-up display. Uh, I can't tell whether you can or not. There's a zero flying around in my field of vision at the moment. Oil's okay, apparently, according to the car. So that's all good. Like I said, the aircon sadly doesn't work. The buttons on the steering wheel are a bit tired, but I've discovered the cruise control works very nicely indeed, actually. I will say... Oh, shut up. I will say, I'm not sure about this textured plastic. I think this is just a bit weird. Um, but I do like the wood. And uh, it's not your typical burr walnut sort of effect. I don't know what sort of wood it is, but I think it looks very nice indeed. Glove box over here. Uh, oh, Queen Greatest Hits, one, two, and three. Uh, the good taste of music continues. But yeah, it's all good up here at the front. Sitting in the rear, it, it is pretty nice. I will say the, the head restraint is a little obtrusive and the um, headroom is actually really tight because of this swooping headline. But if I press this button here, I can recline my seat and now I've got plenty of space but if if I decide this knee room isn't enough there is another trick if I pull down the center armrest I can press this button which makes the passenger seat move forward look at that now I've got all the leg room in the world I've got my own vents down here as well I can't control the temperature that's controlled by the main computer but there are separate vents here for ventilation or ventilation for the for the feet I can change the fan speed and uh, naturally uh, plenty of um, cigarette outlets as well which annoyingly don't seem to want to work with um, my ch phone chargers again we've got the same funky door pockets here in the back as well and again they actually work and while we're here the stereo is absolutely superb I've um, been listening to Classic FM and um, Nevada's Nevermind because I like a mix of music and it sounded absolutely superb. We've got a manual screen back here. Kitsch likes to have his screen um, deployed, but I don't like it. It obscures my vision too much. I don't like it. Sorry, Kitsch. And uh, we've got some non-working lamps in the back. Soft clothes on. Oh, yeah, it's got a soft clothes on your grab handles. Uh, I don't think the seat folds for extra practicality, though. So... Um, I think this is very much it. And uh, yeah, as expected, you can't see anything at all, really. Here's the spheres, the later design. Um, but yeah, there's a tiny little valve inside these spheres, which changes the damping effect. So all pretty impressive stuff. But uh, yeah, we, we can't see an awful lot of engine. We're not entirely surprised it is a modern vehicle. We can have a nose at the wipers and I think we probably should have a wiper demonstration about now. So yeah you will have noticed they are clap handers. Let's go with, oh look at that nice spray of jet. Oh the coverage. Oh the coverage. That is um, some mighty impressive coverage. No corners of disappointment. There's a minor triangle here with a slight dribble going on. Is it going to do a flick wipe to cover that? No I'm going to have to do it myself. Um, I don't call this a triangle of doom, but actually it is dribbling, so maybe I should. But uh, a pretty impressive wiping performance. Sadly, no rear wiper because it's a saloon. And also trying to make one work with that curved windscreen would be kind of interesting, I think. But uh, we shall cover some more miles and see how we get on. I am finding I'm having to leave the suspension in sport mode. I think the kids are going to be spewing everywhere if I try and drive home in normal mode. Um, even to a seasoned hydraulic Citroen owner, it's too much float and it just never seems to settle down. 
So uh, that element I am not keen on at all. But we've got many more miles to cover. So um, yeah, catch us a bit later on. Well, you join me down in Westwood Ho, uh, Devon, where I've um, just been doing a family visit. Uh, we are still aboard the C6. It coped marvelously with the drive over yesterday. And uh, now we're cruising back to Wales. And uh, I thought I'd fill you in with some thoughts after now over 500 miles in this car. Generally, there's a lot to like, but uh, there's a constant nagging sense of, is it doing anything better than any other modern car? And uh, I'm not sure it really does. I do like the sound of the engine, the uh, V6 twin turbo diesel, but by heck has it got some lag. It's actually dangerous at times. I had to cross a dual carriageway at one point and you put your foot down, the car moves forward and then there's nothing. It's just absolutely terrible. So uh, that's not good. I do like the gearbox. The gearbox is very smooth. And I like the noise as well. That's a proper agricultural, but multi-cylinder diesel noise. I like that a lot. It's actually a bit loud for a luxury car. Uh, I don't mind admitting, but uh, yeah, I like it. I love the head up display as well. I can see my speed. You probably can't see it from that angle, but that is projected onto the windscreen. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a, a lot I'm liking about this car, but I don't think that makes me want one. You'll have to pardon the extreme close-up, it's just where the camera is situated today. Uh, yeah, I'm not loving it, I'm liking it, and I can certainly see what the appeal is, but I don't think I would actually want to live with this car every day. I still find it too bouncy in normal mode, I find myself quite often putting the suspension in sport mode just to calm it down a bit it makes a surprising difference but also it's just so big it's enormous uh which is a strange thing to say because the footprint is almost entirely the same as my uh ford fairmont au uh which is of course the car i'm most in a position to compare with which seems a slightly odd comparison but no one's ever made that comparison before but welcome to hubnet that's what we do uh, yeah i'm gonna put it in sport mode again again it's just um too it feels fake it doesn't feel like a hydraulic citroen it feels like someone's programming the suspension to try and behave like a hydraulic citroen and uh, i just don't like it i also find the steering is far too light but i've got my funky little spoiler that pops up at 43 miles an hour and uh, allegedly goes into a higher position at 80 miles an hour but i wouldn't know anything about that but uh, today um, i'm going to try and eke out more economy now, on the rundown yesterday I was, I was doing slightly above the motorway speed limit, uh, not really officer, um, at times yesterday because I, I had to be down here for something quite urgently and uh, I did not want to miss it. Um, but having realised I was probably going to make it, I eased back the speed and that made a huge difference to the economy. Uh, whereas I was typically getting high 30s, that immediately plummeted down, oh sorry, no not plummeted, it went the other way. Um, the number went up to um, a healthy low 40s MPG, which I don't think is bad for a car of this size. That's my foot quite hard down, and suddenly then we go. That is really bad lag. There are another few grumbles. The steering wheel buttons, uh, oh, there they go. They're actually working today, so I can set the cruise control. Uh, yesterday, the buttons were being very intermittent. And uh, intermittent cruise control buttons, not what you want. They don't make for a relaxing time. Uh, never had it freeze up while trying to cancel it, only while trying to set it. But uh, look at the economy now. We're at the average since, I think, just before I picked this car up, uh, it's 36.3 mpg according to the computer. But uh, this car is not cheap to run. It's expensive to tax, um, like hundreds of pounds a year. Uh, so that's not great. And... Uh, Mr. Kitch likes to run it on super diesel, which uh, yesterday I paid two pounds and five pence a litre for, which is why the tank is not full. Uh, I just got to the stage, just like, no, stuff that. I will find somewhere cheaper to actually fully fill the tank. Because fill it, I will have to do before I give this car back. We've still got another 260 odd miles to do taking this car back to Kitch at some point. We're just waiting for Betty to be fixed. But anyway, as you can hear, it is, super peaceful once you're at cruising speed. 
and it really is quite a nice place to spend your time the stereo is very good the, the hublets enjoyed that incidentally the hublets didn't get travel sick in this car even when i took it out of sport mode without telling them so i'm very impressed with that well we're several weeks on now and it's final drive time i'm wearing uh, my uh, giselle design this by um russ wallace rjw designs very very nice um and there's a toyota picnic in the lay-by here what an unusual sight, well, unless you live here, in which case you see it quite often. Mini Hubnut is with me. We're going to hurtle off to uh, Fairham and return the car to Mr. Kitch. So it's about another 260 miles to today, which means we'll have covered a thousand miles in this car. So what's that been like? Yeah, this is a car that continues to baffle me. Um, I drive it sometimes and it frustrates me, the, the way it lags, especially in the lower gears. It must be a mapping thing, perhaps, to save strain on the gearbox but you put your foot down nothing happens and then everything happens that's frustrating and there's lots of other little niggly things but i still get hugely excited when i know i'm going to drive this car it's still big majestic and special in a way um, french barges tend to be flawed but somehow magnificent but uh, i've got someone else here to give their thoughts so uh, mini hubnut what do you think of the c6 in my personal opinion it's actually a pretty cool car uh, and sometimes I fall asleep in it because the suspension. It's very soft, yeah. I've got it in sport mode at the moment, it's still floating. Mm. Um, and uh, what's your favourite button in the car? Oh, my favourite button is in, in the back because you can move the, passen the front passenger seat forwards and backwards. And, and, and have you been driving your mother up the wall with that switch? Yes. Yes, yes. I'm sure there's a way to disable it, but we haven't found it yet. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Of, of a slight issue, the front seats are heated, but the switch is right down where you can't see it. So, um, you, and it's quite easily knocked. You can suddenly find yourself getting unexpectedly warm. Of course, the air conditioning doesn't work. We're going to get very hot today. It's going to be um, probably 26 by the end of this journey. It's currently 17 degrees. And uh, Kitch has got Betty at the moment and is loving the air conditioning. So maybe he'll be motivated to get it fixed because obviously as soon as you start opening a window it entirely spoils the serenity of the experience so uh, we'll keep the windows up as long as we can so we were just cruising along merrily having a lovely time listening to some noise on radio one a bit loud because the windows were down i've done them up to do this little segment to camera because things have started failing uh, rather excitingly it's all gone a bit because french uh, we've got the traction control has packed up the ABS is packed up and there's a P in the triangle. I don't even know what that means. Um, but traction control, ABS tend to be linked to wheel sensors. We've still got the cruise control working, so it's um, detecting speed that way. But the uh, ABS and traction control might rely on other sensors. So we don't know why it's all gone wrong, but it has slightly. The gearbox chucked a little hissy fit earlier on as well at 30 miles an hour. I couldn't decide which gear to be in. Uh, Kitch, uh, as you can see on his channel, Up and Down Vids, has done um, quite a lot of work on the gearbox. He's had it in bits. Uh, I would say there is still some work to go, but it's definitely better than it was. Uh, remembering when we went to collect Betty in this car and the gear changes, especially in deferred, were painful. It's much better. Also, you can feel how lovely his purple bushes are at the front end. That will make sense if you've seen his videos. but. We're going to push on, we've still got quite a long way to go, we're on the M4 at the moment. We will hope that things don't just keep on failing. Slightly concerned because when systems start failing it can be an indication of a charging issue. And I don't think I've got any way of telling uh, on this car whether it's actually charging. But we shall see, we shall push on and hope. So there we go, that concludes our, what, what has become 1100, maybe 1200 mile mega test of the Citroen C6. A car you really do need to drive for more than five minutes and uh, yeah I don't think any car has ever built up such a list of negatives and such a list of positives for me. Uh, there's things I love, there's things I definitely do not love but uh, it, it is unfailingly dramatic and uh, exciting and kind of that's the point really so I don't think it fails on that score some people say it isn't as exciting as earlier big hydraulic citrons I think it absolutely is there's a lovely sense of drama to it and in many ways it's very well thought out it's just that laggy engine and questionable uh, hydraulics perhaps not hydraulics no the hydraulics are fine the electrics 
uh, are the bugbear of this car. But yeah, what a beautiful thing. So huge thanks to Kitch up and down videos for letting me do this extended test. It's ended up being a bit more extended than we hope for reasons you will see in future videos on hopefully both of our channels. But uh, yeah, we shall return it. And I'm very glad to have put it through its paces for this long. So thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in a future video. Farewell.